Hey everybody, this is Walter with Access Electric, Access to Power, and we are here today to kind of recreate our forward and reversing starter tutorial. Uh, I have had some comments on our other video uh, about uh, some of some of the guys that have watched the video. Some some of you folks have uh, a system that works a little bit differently. So we're going to wire it the way I had it wired. We're going to show you how it operates. Uh, that way you can follow along with me how to wire a standard forward and reversing starter. And then we're going to unwire that and wire it uh, up the way uh, some of you have yours wired. And, and that operates quite a bit differently. Um, one of you commented and said, hey, my forward and reversing starter, when I press the forward button, the starter runs in forward, which is great. But then you said, as soon as I press the reverse button, the motor will reverse operation without actually stopping first. So um, I wouldn't recommend that. Obviously, you're putting a lot of strain on a motor that's rotating um, full speed one direction and then has to, the magnetic field all of a sudden reverses and that motor has to come to a stop and reverse direction and go the other way. Putting a lot of strain on that motor. But um, you were asking me, how is my... How is my controls, how is my forward and reverse starting controls wired differently? Well, I want to show you probably what you have going on compared to a standard way of wiring a forward and reverse. So first, we're going to wire it standard. Then we're going to wire it the way you, you have it. And uh, you can see how these things operate. So let's get into it. First of all, what I have here is I have this exact same starter that I, uh, uh, that I used last time, forward reversing starter. It's got a mechanical interlock. It's also, we're going to wire it up with an electrical interlock. Um, I'm going to, as I go through this, I'll be showing you an on-screen uh, schematic and where I am in that schematic as we go along. Right now, I've got a couple things pre-wired. I've got my neutral. Uh, the coils on these on these contactors are 110 volts. I got my 110 volts turned off. Um, I got my hot coming in and then my hot coming out and my neutral coming in and coming out. The neutral goes over and goes directly to my overload contact on terminal number 95. Then from 96, it feeds A2 and this A2 is internally wired to both A2s on both starters. So in other words, the neutral on both starters is wired uh, through the overload. So if the overload trips, it will trip the neutral to both contactors. All right. Then I have my hot. My hot comes from my breaker. Once I turn it on, and it's a little tangled here, but it comes over and it feeds my stop button. You can tell the bottom button here is my stop button. All right. And this is a normally closed contact. That means power is going through all the time. Um, so it is closed until I push it. When I push it, it breaks the contacts. So it's normally closed. Power goes through. Uh, so the stop button basically controls all the power going to the, into the rest of the de uh, devices because if I push stop, it loses power to everything else. On the other side of my stop button, I am feeding a normally open contact on both my forward. This just this will be my forward button at the top. This will be my reversing button. So I am feeding. Uh, one side of both my forward and reversing contacts and then I also am coming back and feeding a normally open contact on the forward starter and a normally open contact on the reversing starter. This will be my forward, this will be my reverse. All right and uh, like I said as I'm going through this I'll be highlighting on the screen so you can follow the schematic along with me. So now that I have that um, I also have this this will be my forward start, my forward start uh, button. And when I press the forward start button, obviously I want the forward contactor to engage. But I have to, uh, I have to make sure that the reverse contactor isn't running. So by doing that, uh, in order to do that, I have to wire the forward contactor through the reverse contactor. So I have to find a normally uh, closed contact on the reverse starter and wire wire my my forward my forward uh, signal through the normally closed on the reverse starter that way if the reverse starter is not running 
Terminal 71 and 72 on this terminal block are closed. That means power is going through them. So as long as this is not running, power is going through. As soon as this turns on, 70 to 72 opens and it's no longer going through. So I'm going to take my forward and I'm going to bring it to my reverse contactor on a normally closed contact and I'm going to wire it. So I'm bringing it over to 71 and I'm wiring it to 71. And then from, and then from terminal block 72, I'm going to come over. Let's do this the other way. I'm going to come over from the other side of my normally closed. And this will feed my forward coil. The coil, the 110 volt coil on the forward starter, which is A1 on the coil itself. So I'll come over. And I'll feed A1 on the coil of the forward starter. So now, if I press forward, power will come through the normally closed contact on the reversing starter, which is closed, so power will come through and it'll feed the coil of my forward starter. But it won't stay on, it'll just, it'll just come on as long as I'm holding the button. As soon as I let go of the button, it would turn off. It wired this way. So I have to put in a holding contact. I have to put in a holding contact. And the way I'm gonna do that is, so right now from the start button, I, I sh uh, the stop button, I showed you that I fed both sides of the forward and the reversing starter. I also have a holding contact that's going to come over and it feeds a normally closed contact on both the forward and the reversing starters. And this is at on terminal number 13 on both of these starters. And these are open. That means power does not go through them until the starter is, is closed. And so when it closes, power is made. This 13 goes through to this 14. And this 13 goes through to this 14. So um, what I'm going to do is um, go from the, this poke me, <laughs> go from the, uh, from 14 on the forward starter. Now these starters are a little funny. Uh, 14 is here located on the reversing starter. 14 is also here on the forward starter, but this overload um, has some internal wiring that grabs the 14 and brings it over to this terminal block. So the one on the left here, the forward starter is going to be just a little different looking than the one on the right. But we're going to come over and we're going to, actually I should have, that, that, that wire was a little longer. So I'm going to swap these out, put the shorter wire here and use, I kind of need that longer wire for the other side. Um, so let's see, let's do that. And so I'm going to go from 14 on the forward contactor and I'm gonna wire that up. And so when the reversing starter is closed, power will come, power will come through and it's also going to feed 71 on my reversing starter, and this was where um, the forward button came. So it'll hold itself on. So there you go, that's wired. That side's gonna look just a little different than the other side. And then uh, also, um, when, I, when, I tr when I reverse my starters, let's move this over, this is my reverse power so it's going to come over and it's going to feed my forwards normally closed my forward starter on the normally closed contact and then we're going to do basically the same thing we're going to come over which one's longer here we're going to come over and we're going to come through the normally closed let me loosen that up a little bit going to come through the normally closed so power was going to go through the starter if it's not running and it's going to feed the coil on my on my reversing starter so it comes over and feeds a1 on the reversing starter so basically my forward starter is controlling my re my reverse and my reverse starter is controlling my forward safety and so the last thing is now you've noticed I got two wires coming into 71 on this side 
I only have one on the forward side. Now I have to come from terminal block 14 on the reversing starter. And this will be my hold for my forward starter. It's going to come over and it's going to, it's going to land on 71 on my forward starter. And this will bring constant power over if that normally closed is actually closed or normally open is actually closed so so now this is a standard wiring so now if i come over and um, i'm going to turn on my 480 volt to my motor i'm going to turn on my 110 volt to my control so right now this is all powered up and if i come over to my my uh, forward starter and i hit forward my motor starts if i hit reverse Nothing happens because my interlocks are protecting uh, on the my interlocks on the reversing starter are protecting my forward starter and my interlocks on the forward starter are protecting my reverse starter. So my reverse starter will not come on until I hit stop. Now when I hit reverse, the motor goes the other direction. Here, let's just sh show you that real quick. So right now in forward, and I'll hit stop. You can see the shaft on my motor is turning clockwise. And if I hit reverse and hit stop, you'll see the shaft on my starter is going counterclockwise. And now if you need a refresher on that, um, you can watch the other video. I'll link it in the in in somewhere uh, up in the, one of the one of the corners. I'll link to that video. You could rewatch that and I show you how I wire the 480 volt to the motor and how it changes through the starter. Basically, I'm rever these starters are reversing uh, two of the two of the phases. Uh, so uh, line one, two, and three come through in line one, two, and three on this starter, and line one, two, and three, basically one and three reverse on this starter. So it changes two of the phases, and the motor goes the other direction. But you can watch that other video if you want to look into that a little bit more, if, not, if you don't understand how that works. So anyway, this is how a standard start-stop is supposed to work. Forward, stop, not start-stop, I'm sorry, a standard forward and reverse is supposed to work. Forward goes forward, you have to hit stop, and then reverse goes reverse, and you have to hit stop. And that's how we wired it before, and that would be the standard way of wiring a forward and reverse. Now I'm going to turn the power off, I'm going to turn off my 480 volt, I am going to turn off my 110 volt control power, I'm going to disconnect all this, control, all this interlocking wiring, and then I'm going to rewire it. Um, the way that uh, some of you have your forward and reversing starters wired, uh, where uh, you will not have to hit stop for it to go the other direction. Again, don't recommend it. It's just how some people have it and they don't understand why it works that way. And, and really the only difference, what I'm going to do is all this wiring that's going to these terminal blocks will go from these terminal blocks to the to extra normally closed contacts on my forward button and my reversing button. So my reversing contact block basically get, gets replaced by my reverse normally closed button. And my forward contact block gets replaced by my normally closed forward contact button. So the buttons are going to do my interlocking, not contact. So I'm gonna actually take these contacts off and take these wiring off and then rewire it with with the buttons themselves, the push buttons themselves. So let me unwire this. So now I've got everything disconnected from the previous way we had we had this starter. I actually removed I removed the contact box from the top of the starter. We're not going to need them for it to operate uh, the way we were talking about because now we're going to do all our interlocking at the button level, not at a contact level. So um, so what we're going to do we're still going to need the normally open here, but we're not going to need that extra normally closed because our normally closed is going to be the this normally closed on this on the forward button and this normally closed on the reverse button. They're going to these two normally closed are going to take the place 
of the two normally closed that went on one on each of our starters. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, so anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to take our forward, our forward signal here from our normally closed. And instead of going directly to the starter, we're going to take our normally closed and we're going to feed or I'm sorry, our normally open from our forward button. We're going to take our normally open. That means this has no power until I push the forward button. We're going to come over and we're going to feed the normally closed on the reverse button. So just like we fed the normally closed contact, we're going to feed the normally closed button. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come from the normally open. So no power until I push the button from the reverse button. And that is going to feed the normally closed of the forward button. So the buttons are interlocked. So that, that way the forward button controls the reverse, the for reverse button controls the forward. We're going to come off the normally closed of our reverse button. And we're going to come over. Ah, and we're going to feed the coil of our forward starter. And then we're going to do the exact opposite. We're going to come over. And we're going to go to the normally closed of our forward button. And we're going to feed the coil of our reverse starter. So the forward button is basically we're interlocking at the button level. That's exactly that's basically what we're doing. All right. So what's going to happen? So let's. Uh, that's a, that's basically the extent of our interlocking. Oh wait, wait. Uh, I, we have to add our holds, our holds, and so our holds are going to basically go from the normally opens on our contactors. So right now we have power on one side and nothing on the other side. So thirteen on the on both starters have power, but there's nothing on fourteen or the other side of our contacts. And uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to uh, bring those holds through. So let's go from our, we're going to go from the hold on our start on our forward contactor. Let's go. Remember this is a little funny. It should be 14 here, but it wires through to our overload. But they're the same exact terminal. 14 here is exactly the same as 14 there. We're going to go 14 from our forward starter and we're going to come over and we're going to feed uh, we're going to parallel here and we're going to feed our normally closed contact on our button and this will be our holding contact for the forward operation and then we're going to do exactly the same thing from 14 on our reversing starter Except here is located here on the contactor itself. And that's going to come over and feed our normally closed contact on our forward button. So now if I did everything correctly there, it should, it should work just fine. All right, I'm gonna turn the power on. I'm not gonna turn on the 480 cause I don't wanna, I don't wanna put that strain on my motor but going backwards and forwards. I just want, I'm gonna show you the contactors operating independently. So that is my forward contact and I can hit stop, that turns off. But I can also come and hit my reversing contact. Now my reversing contact is engaged if I hit forward. Reversing contact opens, forward engages, so the motor would 
would just it would be going full speed one direction and it would just try to go the other direction that magnetic field would immediately switch and that motor has to come to a stop and then reverse direction almost immediately it puts a lot of strain on the windings of the motor but basically what well, all we did was we used our our buttons instead of using the normally closed on our contacts. That's all we did. We put extra normally closed on our buttons and we wired it basically the same way. It just operates a little differently because when we push the button, one button affects the other button. So the forward affects the reverse, the reverse affects the forward without the contactor having to open first. So uh, that's basically it. So you could turn reverse, turn on forward and one the reverse shuts off, forward starts and vice versa. And I'll be going through this on the schematic for you so you can kind of understand. I'll make these prints available for you. I'll put them in the description below. And I hope this makes sense. And if you have any questions, leave a comment. And uh, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll catch you on the next video.